Hi, hello and welcome back. Today is a new day and that means it's perfect day for me to start a new series here on the channel called Underrated Classics. And what I mean by that? Well, on these kind of episodes we're going to talk, well, I'm going to talk about albums that I think are underrated and underappreciated and albums that I think deserved much more attention than they initially got. I mean, most of these records I'm going to talk about are maybe well known in their own respective genre of music, but outside of that, not many people know of them. Maybe you will disagree with me, maybe you won't, but uh, this is just my opinion and I'm going to talk about albums that I think are underrated. So today we're going to talk about a country rock band, uh, called 16 horsepower from Denver Colorado and when I say country yes I'm not the biggest country music fan but I do appreciate it but this kind of country music is a bit different it's not classic country music it is alternative country more gothic rock gothic country actually and 16 horsepower and David Eugene Edwards uh, the singer songwriter multi-instrumentalist uh, and uh, one of the founding mem members of the band were kind of a key part and uh, one of the pioneers in developing that particular sound of gothic country. One of the more interesting things about this band is their interest in older musical instruments like for example Chemister Concertina that was extensively used on uh, sackcloth and ashes especially and uh, they love for that traditional Appalachian instrumentation as well. It is something kind of a unique thing for them, especially. And uh, 16 Horsepower released only a handful of albums before they disbanded in early 2000s. Uh, David Eugene Edwards uh, went along and formed another band called Woven Hand, which has similar vibes to 16 Horsepower, maybe with their more later folkier stuff, but not as much as of their debut record which we're going to talk about called Sackcloth and Ashes from 1996 and this was uh, a really unique album uh, for, from that year and the version I've listened to contains 14 tracks uh, so I believe they added one more track uh, that was initially released on their uh, first debut EP from 1995. They added the first first single of it, which uh, which was called Ha. So I'm gonna count this one as well because I do believe that song, in particular, fits perfectly uh, on this album. It is really hard to describe and define the band's sound because they borrow from a variety of different influences, obviously country, folk, bluegrass and gothic rock. Their music is hypnotic, it is believable and atmospheric at the same time, drenched in religious imagery. Eugene Adler's lyrics and his yelping, preaching voice really sells this type of music. You may disagree with his preaching, but you have to appreciate the emotion and commitment in his delivery, which is kind of under understandable uh, because his grandfather was a Nazarene preacher and Eugene often went along with him on his journeys preaching gospels to gospel to people and that definitely influenced and kind of shaped his songwriting and lyrics especially. One of the more unique parts of the band, more recognizable parts of the band is his voice and lyrics. Um, they perf blend perfectly into this whole dark gothic country atmosphere and this album it is really dark, it is really brooding. The album opens up with cryptic, atmospheric and apocalypt apocalyptic I seen what I saw that sets the overall mood and vibe of the record with its heavy usage of steel pedal guitar which is one of the more prominent instruments here. Um, then we go straight to the maybe m the most well-known songs by 16 horsepower called Black Soul Choir, a banjo driven song in which Edwards yelps and preaches every man is evil, yes, every man's a liar, unashamed with their wicked tongue, the Black Soul Choir. Never would I have I guessed that I would enjoy banjo as much as I do on this song. Uh, it is great driving track. Then we have Haw, already mentioned Haw, which is an added track and it's another fierce and uh, captivating 
dark brooding song um, and the singing the way he sings is really menacing and the main riff is really well written it's apparent that Eugene was influenced by bands like Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds and even Birthday Party, another Nick Cave project. As we can see in the tracks like Heel on the Shovel, that feels like a song of murder ballads. And especially when you look at the lyrics of that songs dealing with murder. Uh, American Wheeze is another highlight from the record with its menacing and dark uh, uh, melody played on Chemister Concertina and then we I think that's definitely my favorite from this record Eugene's broken voice heavy distorted guitar in the background as well stomping bass that accompanies that concertina melody makes this song really stand out I have to mention that besides Eugene we have that both Jean Yves Tola on drums and Kevin Soul on bass really shine on, on here as well. Uh, and I have to mention there is a guest appearance on this record by none other than Gordon Gaino of Violent Femmes who played the fiddle on this record. This whole album is a wild ride for me and it could be a five star record but only one song keeps it down a bit for me and that is Redneck Reel is the only song on this whole project that feels out of place. It ruins the vibe and the flow of the record, for me at least. It is a more traditional country rock song with yeehaws, etc. It is not bad by any means, but it's just out of place. And overall, I have to say, this album and this band are really underrated. They both deserve more attention, and if you like more alternative and darker country sound this is the band for you and i highly highly recommend it so 4.5 stars for sackcloth and ashes so tell me what you think have you heard this album before if you have please do leave comments down below uh, like share subscribe and all that good youtube jazz and we'll see you in the next one